gentlemen. Yeah, I knew <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Brian Brushwood. Hey, buddy. Thank you. Jason Murphy. God damn. I just experienced the single most Hollywood moment of my entire life. <laughs> Rolling up in a Porsche with Here's 80s rap, and then somebody hands me a coffee. <laughs> somebody sent me footage of this moment, I swear to God. <laughs> this episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Squarespace. Head on over to squarespace.com slash rogue, give it a free trial, get 10% off when you use promo code rogue. Jason Murphy, as we record this, it is early 2023. Mm -hmm. 10 plus years ago, late 2012 was when we began our hardcore journey to having our own television show. God, I feel like Matt Damon at the end of Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, just <laughs> melts. <laughs> so what we wanted to do is demystify the process. When we first started, I, I, we didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I, we failed a lot. First of all, get ready for a lot of failure, right? Yeah, and a lot of saying yes, just because you didn't know any better. And by the way, saying yes brings with it its own peculiar set of gifts because saying Saying yes causes you to be in a situation where somebody's clearly doing the wrong thing and you disagree with everything, but you're like, <laughs> yes. Oh, that didn't happen. Not on this project, but you know the ones that came before it. To anybody who doesn't know, Hacking the System is coming to Disney Plus. Before that happened, it appeared on the extended cable network, National Geographic. Mm -hmm. And before that, it was just a vision in our eyes and the next in a series of failed Pilots, when was the moment that you felt that maybe, just maybe, we were onto something? You want to know when? When we were standing in downtown Los Angeles and I'm talking to the crew and they're going, no, oh, this doesn't ever happen. Shows actually getting made? No, dude, this is, this is for real. And they're telling me that and I'm like, Oh, okay, okay. I thought that was your job was to make shows. And they're like, uh, everybody thinks that. That's the great secret. I know, but they're telling me, they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. Because I was at the point where I was going, yeah, but they're never gonna air it. Well, and even then, <laughs> first of all, if you do not know at home, it is a miracle that anything ever gets made ever, right? It, it, okay, so I always say, it is really, really hard to make a movie. Yes it is next to impossible to make a good movie. Yes. And it is a miracle to get a good movie scene. Yes. I think that's the same thing with television. So in our case, we had the benefit of going all the way back. You were there when we launched Scam School. In fact, I believe it was one of the first couple dozen episodes that you made your appearance along with Tom Merritt. Oh yeah. And we learned how to scam free beers at the bar. You looked like a baby, I looked like a baby. We all look like babies. <laughs> just these weird little cherubs and these cheeks. <laughs> But a few years later, we had this collection of brilliant ideas and we came upon this idea of like, how does a magician see the world differently? How does a grifter see the world differently? What are all the secrets that nobody knows to even ask about? Well, they had approached you and said, we want a television show and that's it. <laughs> and so we were That's how easy it is, people. <laughs> yeah. Just wait for somebody to approach you. <laughs> bada bing, bada bang, well, you got a show. Based on Scam School, right? Right. Uh, they approached you, the production company, and they said, hey, uh, pitch us some shows. And so you contacted me and I was like, well, what do they want? And we had gone through a couple of different permutations where we talked about, well, what's it going to be called? And we had a bunch of different names that a lot of them. the one that really locked me in was and it wasn't even for this project you just said the words the secret knowledge of brian brushwood and that idea that sherlock holmes like point of view where everything looked different to somebody who understood everything from line queuing theory to advertisement and branding to architecture to everything that is being made to manipulate you i thought there was really something there so we tried to break everything into discrete aha uh -huh, uh, dopamine hits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is really a good rule of thumb when you're making any content these days is that fast, always giving a reward, always giving a reward. But at first, it, it wasn't even called hacking the system until partway through filming, right? At first it was the secret knowledge of Brian Brushwood. Then it was how to cheat at life. The sweet life of Brian and Jason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to be honest, like at some point they just told us, it's, it's going to be ha called hacking the system because that's what cleared legal <laughs> yeah. and we're like cool as best i could tell step one to getting a tv show is look like you know how to be on a tv show and that's what youtube is great for if you can have a hot take and if you can write good material i assume you'll at least get in the room right what so many of them want to see is that you can do it right and that it, you have already kind of done it i wonder when's the last time you saw some of the original footage that we shot for this probably right after we shot it 
This is, I believe, footage we own because... <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll find out. It yeah. gets weird. So you're at a busy bar. It's loud and the music's annoying. Somebody's monopolized the jukebox and you're hearing nothing but Margaritaville over and over and over again. What do you do? Well, if you're a hacker, you build one of these. For about 40 bucks online, it's called an Ubertooth Bluetooth scanner. And the moment you turn it Shouts on- Shouts out to one of our hacker community who hooked us up with these. These are authentically a gizmo that allows you to take over the jukebox. Remote. Change the volume, skip other people's music, add credits for free. The world's your oyster when you have a magic hacking wand. There was a guy I saw in the background. He was so mad at us. Like, I don't want to be on camera. I'm going to kick your ass if I'm on camera. And I was like, okay, you're, you're not. He totally was. I just saw him. <laughs> but, I mean, he is now. <laughs> he is now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Good luck, guy. <laughs> In the Texas state prison system, prisoners who are on suicide watch are not allowed unsupervised access to cigarettes. The reason, amazingly, is because cigarettes can be transformed into razor sharp knives. The secret is to start by lighting the filter into the cigarette. If you pinch it off as it burns, that fiberglass tip will become a razor sharp knife, allowing him to cause damage to himself and others. I actually put the cigarette hack into a novel and my early readers called me out saying, that's a bit of a stretch. I don't think that's a thing. You're like, oh really? I'm like, there's a lot of stuff I made up. This wasn't one of them. Yep. All right, Murphy, I got one for you. Oh my God. I want you to turn so you're face directly towards me. All right? All right. Your eyes on my eyes. I want you to make two fists like this, all right? I want you to mentally choose one of these two fists. It is the most important place in the entire universe. You have to be very, very clear in your mind, otherwise this won't work. You have one fist selected, right? I had no idea if this was going to work. Yeah. It's this one, isn't it? It is. <laughs> now, it's creepy, right? It feels like I read your mind. Yes. Here's the thing, is the little thing called the idiomotor response causes people to unconsciously react in micromuscular ways. In this case, I made sure everything was balanced and set up and I focused on your nose. And as you nodded, your nose would creep over towards my left side and that's how I knew that's which one it is, all right? You wanna try that right now? Oh, okay. The stone? Yep. Right here? here? Uh, you do it to me. Oh, okay. Right, uh, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you which one it's all in. Right. Okay. <clears throat> okay, how do I do it again? You insist that I get balance, mm -hmm. and then you put me in a place where I'm focusing only on where the stone is. Okay, I want you to focus on what's going on right here. Focus on it, all right? Now focus on the one where you have it in your hand. It's this one. Oh no! Damn it! <laughs> That's the beauty of it, is that <laughs> even if it fails, don't admit a, a, a failure, just keep on going to the next thing. In this case, we got lucky and, and it happened to be right, but usually the nose will track ever so oh. slightly off to the right side. Okay, that's me reacting to your body posture, reading your nonverbal cues. If we wanted something truly scientific and we wanted a 50-50 chance, what would we use? A coin. Of course, a coin. What if I told you that you could hack a coin toss? That is not true. <laughs> It totally it is. is. Not Get this. True. And the truth is, when you flip a coin like this, it give or take is a fair flip. It really is almost 50 50. But there's slightly more metal on the head side than there is on the tail side, which means if you get to control the method of the flip, you can shape the odds in your favor. While it's spinning, it's essentially balanced on its edge, and that slight difference in weight will drag the head sides down. 80% of the time. And you just broke game theory. I didn't break it, I just hacked it. <laughs> see, tight, right, tight, Murphy, tight, change. little nuggets. All right, Murphy, I'm gonna change the way you see the entire world for the rest of your life, and I'm gonna do it with a magic trick. I've already made my prediction. Pick any magazine you want out of the entire rack. I don't care, it could be a trashy magazine, men's magazines, women's magazine, whatever one. In fact, I don't even wanna know which one it is. You got one? I got one. All right, rivel through and see. Remember in that magazines? Magazine, I'm gonna guess <laughs> that there's probably an ad for a watch at some point. So as you go through, let me know what you found an ad for a watch. All right, got you, one. All right, in your mind, I want you to register what time is on that watch. You got it? Yes. Okay, for the first time, Murphy, what time is on that watch? Uh, 10 after 10. Exactly what I predicted. What? Boom. Here's the thing, there's only one position of hands that keeps everything balanced and shows the logo of the watchmaker on there. And it's either 1009 or 1010 on every single watch you ever see advertised. Watch for it now. You'll not be able to not see it from this day forward. It's like I'm looking at myself and I'm like, well, that's me. 
Uh, I don't remember any of this. Seems like I should remember any of this. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm right with you. But those little truth bombs, they all add up. And that's exactly what we were pitching because we didn't make the mistake of thinking, this is a show where we finally get to tell it how it is. Instead, it's like, no, 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 this is a drug delivery system where every 30 seconds you're gonna go, ooh. Oh, and on and on and on. Right. Requiring much less investment from people whose attention you were trying to get so they'll tell you, yes, we'll make this show. If they're just like getting the good stuff rapid fire like that, they think, oh, okay, you've sold me. Whereas if you have to sit down and go, okay, here's how this works. It's gonna take me an hour. You're gonna lose people's attention, but this is just rapid fire drip of dopamine. Tell me if this lands with you. In my experience, anybody who's trying to make it as an independent creative, people want their words out to the world and they assume that because the words are good, somebody will make them go out in the world. <laughs> in my experience, that's not what drives people. What drives people is a fear of missing out mm. on the next big thing. Mm. Being good at what you do, having good content or whatever, that's not enough. Beethoven was buried in a pauper's grave. H.P. Lovecraft uh, was broke when he died. They're amazing, geniuses in their fields, but it takes more than that. So what is the way that you convince all of the gatekeepers that you, what you have is full of momentum and is gonna be an avalanche whether they participate or not? You do it without them. <laughs> Ideally, and there are examples of that. You know, every so often the gates crash open, you get your YouTube successes, you get your PewDiePie's and your Mr. Beasts and so on. But by and large, you still have to please some kind of gatekeeper. And for us, that brings us to oh. our pitch deck. What's a pitch deck? It is just an outline of what the show is, what the first couple of episodes are gonna be, and then what the rest of the season looks like in broad strokes. In your experience, what do most pitch decks look like? Boring. It's a Word document. <laughs> yes, exactly. We wanted our pitch deck to look like an artifact from an alternate reality. We wanted it to look like it teleported straight out of the Cold War, 1962 or what have you. Yeah, so it was really just adding flavor. It was bringing a little bit of the show to the pitch. So we went and we took the uh, clandestine photos and worked a bunch of stuff that was actually based off of old like OSS reports and stuff like that. We also intentionally hid certain parts because we knew that not having the entire picture would only make things more interesting. So if you only saw phrases like coded messages, ambiguity or whatever, you would realize there's more to the story. Instead of a, here's a hooray for Brian Brushwood bio, we put what looked like a dossier. And I love that it says, posed as magician on the Tonight Show. I mean, it's accurate. I, I, I definitely don't believe I earned it. <laughs> All of this was put together by Allison, right? Yeah, yeah. She just used some uh, uh, Photoshop magic and went in. And I love, I was just looking at this. I love, I'm like, wait a minute, I know that. That's thermite. Yep. <laughs> There's something to the fact when people can smell that there's more effort beneath the surface. And the production company was shocked when we presented this. They just kind of laughed like, oh, you did our job for us. And we're like, they, yes, they, we did. They indicated that it was better than they were planning. Like maybe we had gone overboard, but I don't think we did. Well, and all of that I think speaks to try to create an air of inevitability to whatever it is you want to create. Like we knew mm. that this existed in us and that it was going to get out somehow. And they had the opportunity to be part of it. Like this was the secret key that opened the door. Yeah, and this was something uh, along with the footage that we already had, we presented them with a viable product and we said, this is happening. This is what we are doing. Would you like to be involved as we move forward with it? Rather than, hey, we want to do this and here's the idea. Will you let us? No, you show them that yes, we can do it. There are other projects that we're working on where that same methodology has opened some doors for us, where they said, oh, you're actually making this happen. I feel like anything more I say is going to get both of us in trouble. So <laughs> let's watch right. one more clip of one of our favorite moments as we were trying to pitch the show. When it comes to starting fires out in the wild, I'm no Boy Scout, but luckily I don't need to be. As long as I have steel, wool, and a nine volt, I can create a battery operated fire. All I need is two artifacts of civilization. <laughs> You want an insurance policy almost guaranteed to get your lost wallet returned to you? Keep a baby photo in there. Lost wallets with baby photos get returned 88% of the time. Here's a simple science-based magic trick for you. This one seems familiar. That's a good one. 
Apparently it made a whole career on one trick from a hundred year old book. Sulfur flash, almost no smoke as it- All right, look, here's the point. Everybody at home is about to watch Hacking the System on Disney Plus, releasing January 25th in the United States. Ask us your questions. What do you want us to revisit? We'll make all of it happen. What dresses should we have to present ourselves as Disney princesses? It's a whole new world. Should we start beef with other Disney princesses? Hmm. I'm trying to decide which one I could take in a fight. <laughs> I, I just want to know which one I can outrun. <laughs> hey, Bryce, mm. you hear about the, the, these square spaces? You see this? You hear about this? Yeah, yeah, uh, you hear about the square spaces? We're all hippies, but uh, all the squares that go to the space, it's online. Do you know why all the squares go to Squarespace? No, why? Because it's easy, it's reliable, it scales beautifully. 99.99% .99 uptime, distributed hosting, so you can become an overnight sensation all around the world. Award-winning designs. That's right, talking about video blocks so it's easy and fast to load your pages. Talking about members only sections. And guess what? Once you become super popular with your awesome idea, then they can handle your email lists. You can have an online store. You could become a god emperor of the squares. Squares. First, give it a try. Head on over to squarespace.com slash rogue, spell it right. But then once you've given it a try, become a square. Hey, square. Like me. Like he. Get bent, hippies. Get bent. <laughs> <laughs> Only squares in the square space. Only people who have a message that the whole world needs to hear. Make it bold, make it beautiful, make it loud. Head on over and visit our friends at squarespace.com. They do websites. <laughs> I don't think I even mentioned that part. <laughs> squares! <laughs> squares! <laughs> squares! <laughs> Modern Rogue is supported in part by viewers like you at patreon.com slash modern rogue. In the description, you can find all of our credits and additional ways to support the show. All right, you're going to hear yourself slightly delayed by 450 milliseconds here. It's equivalent to if you've ever given a speech in a giant arena, as I'm sure you have, that ability to not talk while you're hearing yourself here. Go ahead, you talk into there and give it a try. Okay, I have experience. <laughs> I've exper experience speaking in are arenas all the time. Uh, it, it doesn't, this, this doesn't, you, I don't. <laughs>